for instance, people would consider history as a subject that has to be done in quite some detail. Uh, I couldn't do that. I just did modern Indian history, but I completely left out art and culture, ancient India, medieval India and world history. Success is no accident. It requires hard work, dedication and above all, the love for what you do. Today's interview is based on the same. Hello everyone, welcome to DU Beat, India's largest student-run newspaper. I'm Himaswita, the Editor-in-Chief, and today we have with us Saksham Goel, who made both St. Stephen's and the University of Delhi proud by securing All India Rank 27 in the recently declared results of UPSC 2021. Welcome, Saksham. Firstly, congratulations on your achievement. It's a proud moment for everyone. And secondly, thank you so much for giving us your time. It means a lot for both me and the entire team of DUB. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, before we begin, I would like you to introduce yourself, not as a UPSC topper, but as an individual, your likes and dislikes and everything. Uh, so, uh, I did my graduation in BA program from St. Stephen's in economics and in political science. Uh, I graduated in 2020 when I was underage. Uh, during college, my interests were largely uh, post-independence political history of India, especially the 1970s, Indira Gandhi and that period. And it was that period of time when I read a lot about bureaucracy and uh, journalism and economy. And that's where my interest developed. Secondly, uh, I'm also a student of US politics and uh, follow it very closely. Uh, largely, uh, these have been my interests, but also uh, my interests have been in academia. So I keep on uh, pursuing uh, reading journals and books uh, regarding my subjects and beyond, including uh, quantum physics and data mining. That's amazing. So how does it feel to be back on campus? It, it feels amazing because I never got my uh, farewell here. We had the lockdown. We went back uh, for a week for the mid-sem break. We never came back. So it's really, uh, it's really good being back. All right. I hope you get a farewell. Not a farewell, but as in a, some sort of ceremony for you. All right. So I have seen and you know read a lot of your interviews where you have constantly focused on how smart work and dedication is the key to success in this examination. So could you please illustrate a bit about your journey considering you cleared it at the very first attempt itself? So as far as smart work is concerned, I think it's a euphemism for, for what people call as Jugaad. Uh, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's an exam which does not require a lot of intellectual work. It requires us to do the basics of everything. There's a lot to be done, but at a very average level, right? Uh, as far as smart work is concerned, I can give you one example. For instance, people would consider history as a subject that has to be done in quite some detail. Uh, I couldn't do that. I just did modern Indian history, but I completely left out art and culture, ancient India, medieval India, and world history, right? So that kind of uh, smart work can be done. Uh, secondly, one example that I can give is of my essay. Uh, my essay was on the 7th of January. So I knew the, six, the 6th of January is a very important date for US politics. The Capitol riots happened. I knew there would be some good articles on it. So one day before that, I picked up the New York Times, found out good articles, and I wrote them in my essay. So that kind of a smart work helps. As far as dedication is concerned, I think it is the habituation of uh, dedication in the sense that once you get in the habit that, okay, from 10 o'clock I'm going to study and you get into the habit of it, it doesn't feel like hard work. Yeah. All right. So uh, can you please illustrate a bit about how you started to think that, you know, you should go for UPSC or everything. So was it your family who inspired you to go for it or was it your own motivation to work in the civil services? So there have been, uh, I think, three reasons. One is, yes, in my family, there's a trend of uh, serving in the government. Uh, secondly, in college, there used to be a lot of bureaucrats uh, who used to come for the lectures. Uh, so we, uh, I saw that, okay, this is a place and this is a community which I can work with. Thirdly, I used to read a lot of books by bureaucrats, as I mentioned, of the 1970s and 80s. So I uh, developed a certain appreciation, of course with some criticism, but an appreciation of the work that the bureaucracy has done in a country like India. That is why I decided to get into the bureaucracy. All right. So whenever we go through the journeys of toppers, say UPSC, NEET or any other examination as such, 
we always have this thing that oh my god they have been toppers throughout their life you know they have been doing well in their 10th 12th and graduation as well and if i'm not wrong you scored 96% in your 10th board examination and i'm pretty sure you scored well in your 12th as well to get into a prestigious institution like stephens so this brings me to my next question did you ever face or felt like you know you failed in something before your preparation or during your preparation and if yes how did you overcome the same uh before i answer this question i'll uh, clarify in 12th i did not get a very good grade okay. uh, it was my best of 4 which was good mm -hmm. but uh in my best of 4 it was not uh, there was no economics okay. uh, economics was my favorite subject i read a lot about it by ended up scoring 78 out of 100 so that was a failure Uh, but during my preparation i did not have a lot of pressure because my so called plan b was something that was as lucrative if not more lucrative which was going into the academia following economics as uh, my passion so uh, i never had that pressure uh, it was but also i was enjoying the process it was a very enjoyable process because i was at my home it was very comfortable after 5 years in hostel it was very comfortable so i did not have that and also when we hear discussions about upsc being going on there is always this doubt that when to begin should we begin in the first year of college itself or should we wait till third year so what is your take on this do you have any set timeline do you think that you think should be followed when it comes to this preparation uh, so for this i'll address only the people in du because people in engineering and uh, medical don't have that relevance here um, i think how do you define preparation matters because uh, was i preparing uh, when i was reading books by journalists because i used them extensively in my ethics integrity paper or in my essays of course i was not preparing for upsc but it helped me out right uh, or was i preparing when uh, it my optional paper in the paper in the examination was my graduation subject i think one year of preparation is fine but during graduation i would suggest at least get to know the paper get to know the examination the syllabus attend a few topper talks on youtube to understand what the paper is all about secondly read a few books by bureaucrats to understand what the job is because the image of the job that is created is different from what the job really is that is what can be done during uh, the graduation years after graduation once you are done with this you know how to prepare one year would be enough all right so this brings me to my next question do you think that the subjects or the subject that one opts for during the graduation gives the individual edge during the upsc preparation considering like you had ba program that is uh, economics and political science as your combination so did it give you an edge during your preparation uh yes and no uh, yes because uh, i was able to complete my optional preparation during the graduation years itself i did not uh, do proper upsc kind of preparation but i did the syllabus uh, so it helps we are more accustomed to the terminology the phraseology how to write answers but also no because upsc has a very bad uh, system of optional subjects where we are expected to write answers to very broad questions in just 200 words so we are more accustomed to writing more nuanced answers whereas in upsc we are supposed to write just average uh mainstream answers in just 200 words so that is something that i had to battle with so yes and no all right so we had asked our audience to drop in their questions and most of the questions here are based on your journey of upsc so i would like to address them i hope you will be kind enough to answer all right so the first question is how should the aspirants begin with the syllabus so first of all read the syllabus and then uh, see a few past year question papers right then see a few topper talks right so what happens is there is no the strategy there are strategies you need to see what your strengths are what your weaknesses are then once you've done that you see what's the weightage of that thing if you don't like economics you cannot leave it i did not like geography i could not leave it but for a subject like art and culture which has low weightage i could have left it i did right so once you understand this exam and that is something that i was suggesting that you can do in the graduation years it doesn't take a, a lot of time once you are done with that then you can customize your plan according to yourself which has to be a very flexible plan right in the topper talks we just tell what the plan was in the end it is a hindsight image right but it changes it changes every month it changes every week right so it has to be a flexible customized plan but not so flexible that you wander around right that is how you can begin all right so the next question is what are the resources you utilized for the different papers and prelims 
So uh, I'll be doing a topper talk. I'll tell in detail there. Uh, but again, they were all the same books that everyone does for polity, for instance, Lakshmi Kant, for history, for modern history spectrum, for environment, Shankar IAS, for science and tech, absolutely nothing, just the current affairs. Uh, for economy, uh, again current affairs and it was my graduation subject, so just newspapers. In the newspapers, of course, the Indian Express and a monthly magazine. So th those were pretty uh, normal ones. But in addition to that, again, uh, the gra during graduation, because it was political science, so it was not just Lakshmi Khan that I was doing. I was reading Granville Austin, Bidya Chakrabarti and Subhash Kashyap and um, all those books, right? Sunil Khilnani. So those, book also, those books also helped me in the means. Right, so to give me an edge. So uh, when I was preparing for my talk, I uh, have called it the average plus model. So the entire answer has to be average, but just in the penultimate paragraph, just two or three lines which give which gives me an edge would be from those sources. So an individual asks, can you share some tips for notes making? Okay, so uh, my notes, may I, I make notes for everything. One, they should be what uh, what you could call digestible, okay? Because people make uh, 150 page notes of a 200 page book, right? So if you're making notes of economics, don't start by defining economics in those notes, right? They should be very crisp. Second, they should be regularly compiled. So uh, during my pre uh, prelims preparation, one month before the prelims, I had about a 700, 800 page uh, PDF in which there was everything that I need to know, right? So I could revise it again and again. Thirdly, I made it in Word because I could easily, you know, uh, change it. There are a lot of additions that have to be made. So I would have on my desktop two windows open. Uh, one would be the text of which I'm making the notes of and second would be the Word there. And the third window in the background would be some movie that I would listen. I, I used to see the same movie ten times. So uh, that way you can make notes but use those notes. Some people keep on making those notes but don't read them. Right, so you have to make those notes and read them ten times, five times. All right, then study hours per day and other co-curricular activities. Okay, so uh, first study hours. Uh, I s began with I think four or five hours. So I used to study in the night because if anyone is awake at home, I cannot study. So I used to s begin at 10 p.m. earlier till two o'clock around. Uh, then I pushed it to 3, 4 and then 5 o'clock. That was the maximum range. Uh, I cannot give a lot of long sitting, so after 20, 25 minutes I used to take a break of 10, 15 minutes. Uh, also I took breaks uh, in days also. So the entire August of 2020 was gone because of university exams and December was gone because I had a family in my, uh, I had a wedding in my family. So it was not that kind of pressure key. I have to study for 8 or 10 hours. Yes, of course, do, when the exams are near, one month is left, then I can push it to eight or nine hours. Uh, your second question was? Uh, are the co-curricular activities? The co-curricular activities, I played Ludo. About 10, 15 games a day. That was my stress buster because it doesn't take up a lot of energy. I could play it with my family. That was the stress buster. All right. Um, an individual asks, what was your prep how was your preparation for the interview round? So uh, the interview, uh, I didn't get a lot of time because the results came I think on the 17th of March and my interview was on the 13th of April. Uh, so the first thing I did was without any preparation I went to mock interviews. So uh, there uh, for instance one thing is uh, uh, the way I am speaking right now I would say the way I am speaking right now to make the words more discreet because uh, the image of elitism should not come. right? Uh, secondly uh, this hand movement cannot be there. We have to sit like this. Right. So those etiquettes uh, I understood from there. As far as the preparation is concerned, we uh, write a DAF, the detailed application form in which we write our interests. I wrote only those interests which I really was invested in. Again, the books that I told about, the US politics, uh, certain topics in economics, behavioral economics and discounting functions. All of those things which I am very comfortable in, I wrote them. So I did not have to do a lot of preparation. Yes, I had to prepare for my city Agra, my state Uttar Pradesh and stuff like that, especially the history which was tough, but uh, did not take a lot of time in that. All right. So is coaching necessary for preparation? Uh, again, I'm sorry, but yes and no. Uh, yes, because you you can use the monthly magazines that are freely available, right? Uh, yes, also because I took a coaching which I did not attend a lot. 
but pe I can understand people from engineering backgrounds or medical backgrounds who have not written any answers, they have been uh, in their own fields. So, for them probably to take the plunge coachings might help. But I do not think that for people in Delhi University who are you know in touch with these subjects, they I do not think need to. Uh, modules yes, for instance test series, those, will, those can be important, current affairs magazines they can be important. All right. So, let me take this opportunity to ask this question that I had in mind and you had already touched on it a bit and that was if not UPSC then what was your plan B? So, my plan B was uh, again uh, to become a professor in economics. I still plan to go for higher studies, the government sponsors IS officers to go abroad and study in Ivy League colleges, uh, but my plan B was to go into academia. All right. And uh, now with the declaration of results for not only UPSC but for other examinations all as well, there is this criticism coming up that you know toppers are always glorified. What about the people who were preparing so well all along and then couldn't clear the examination? So what is your take on this as a topper yourself? Yeah, definitely it's correct because in prelims the cutoff was 87.54, I got 88.22. That was just a 0.68 marks difference in 200 marks, right? So it's it in the end after a certain level it is all about luck. You know a few days ago I did not know if I will remain unemployed, right? So it is all about luck and I think people, uh, I have seen people, most of them giving 3, 4 or 5 attempts and I see their dedication. It was not that they had less knowledge, it was just probably their luck also did not work that good. Right? So definitely uh, people who are uh, toppers, they have worked hard but there are many more people who have worked even harder, who have, who have more knowledge but did not make through this time. Love the answer. All right. So, last question. Any message for the upcoming aspirants? I would say that first of all, be convinced that you actually want this job, right? It has become a national pastime today, right? Uh, whatever you want to do first, let's at least uh, go for the civil service preparation. Be convinced, you know, through your readings that you actually want the job. Once you've done that, then also understand this exam is, as I, as you said, is also about luck. So, it will take some time, right? It might take a few attempts, okay? Thirdly, do not give away all your productive years to it, right? Have a timeline in your mind that, okay, I will just give two or three attempts because 22 to 29 is the most productive years of your life when you can actually achieve something. So, do not give all of it away. Fourthly, I would say when you are in the preparation, when you need motivation, again go back why you wanted the job. That will be your constant source of motivation. Work hard till the, uh, till the last day and you will make it. Alright, thank you so much Sachin for joining us today.